I've asked the elder women, how do we teach the young about birth? How do we teach about agriculture? And they always say, go back to the story of the first birth, the story of the first garden. So when we plant the corn in the garden, we remember that creation story. What we are trying to do is rescue and, and preserve not only uh, old practices, old uh, seed from dif different uh, traditional native crops, and also uh, old tradition, old knowledge. There are a number of families yet around the Iroquois communities that hold seeds, uh, heirloom type seeds, and we've gone around to gather that. And in this center, at least in the seed bank level, we plant the, the, the seed lines to sustain them from one year to the next and to re-strengthen them to select according to stock and resistance to drought and resistance to disease and so forth. And to preserve that part of it, definitely the germplasm, that's basic. In the short time since we've been here, if we hadn't done some of what already has been done, there's likely uh, some would have been some loss of germplasm, which is permanent. Uh, so something that's been here for 5,000 years is gone in one generation. You know, so, and already there has been that kind of loss. The goal of the program is to, I think, revitalize Indian agriculture, um, at least in New York State and, and possibly in, in other areas as, as well. A secondary goal is for us to better understand why indig indigenous agricultural systems work. So we're, we're looking for ways to, uh, to take the knowledge from indige indigenous agriculture, apply it to modern agriculture in ways that may help us to reduce fertilizer or pesticide use and make those systems uh, operate a little bit more environmentally soundly. Right now we, uh, in the collection, we had 10 different varieties of corn, open pollinated varieties. 10 different species of beans, one uh, blue potato, and we had a, a one squash. And we had about 60 different lines, what we call lines with different crossing. We control the intercrossing because we, we want to keep uh, this line pure. At the same time, we are trying some intercrossing between some of them to see, to see the results, to see if we can improve some of them. Then the, the way that we control it is it, it, a a pretty known method for, for plant breeders, just the pollinization bag, what they call it. It's, we put the, the bag over, it, over the, the core tassel at the top of the, of the plant at the moment uh, that, that, that the pollen is getting mature. The pollen is released within the bag, and then we take the bag and we put it on top of the ear. Uh, and, and this pollen inside the bag will pollinize uh, that plant only, and we avoid covering the, the ear. We also are avoiding pulling from other plants coming in, 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 into the plant. The white corn that we're growing is a corn specifically for human consumption, and it um, corn is a, a, a basic food product for large portions of, of the world's population. Um, Iroquois Indians eat the corn in a corn soup or corn mush. Um, often uh, ground in, in, into flour. It was an old man uh, in, in, uh, among the Mohawks who's, who's now uh, passed away, but um, uh, he was chief uh, of, of the uh, Turtle clan, and he had this little prophecy or little story which he said, uh, the time of the Indian is coming, and there would come a moment when all that knowledge gathered in the big buildings that they have, it's full of books and so forth, would come in, in, in ologies, he called them. But they would not talk to each other very much. They, would, they start losing the way to talk to each other and how to relate their knowledge to each other. But these, these individuals will start to look inside of their own ology and realize that something was drastically wrong and start to understand that within that they couldn't fix it. And he says at that time is when the Indian circle, the Indian way of thinking, would start to surface. And those best, those minds who haven't lost their heart, somehow they'd start to connect 
back to either the circle of the earth or the circle of, of Indian thinking. And out of that, there's going to be a call for the Indian voice to, to, to be heard. It is a very special day. This particular part of harvesting the white corn is very significant to us because this is the corn that we use throughout the year uh, in our ceremonies. This is dried on the stalks in the fields and then prepared uh, special ways for special purposes. This is a gift. Just the corn, the beans, the squash, and the nutrients that you get from the, from the foods that we ate. So what is happening here today is a harvesting of a crop, you know, and, and it's very nice to, to be among your people and, and to do this. And it's nice that you are there with us to share in this moment, you know. The corn cobs uh, will be used, uh, the corn husk will be used to make dolls. You know, there's not too much waste. With a, a bushel of corn, you then became very rich in being able to provide for yourself and your family and your community. Everything is a thanksgiving. In singing the corn songs, we're giving, giving thanks for the corn the sustenance of life. So thank you, corn, for being here. Thank you, corn, for filling my stomach. Giving thanks that um, planting time has come again. The berries are here again. The green corn is here again. The harvest is here again. Giving thanks.